Hello all my chickadees and welcome back to Sarcarium Par Pario? I am sorry, I cannot pronounce this correctly. But oh my gosh, it's been quite a while. I didn't think it'd been this long, but wow. Okay, we're gonna dive back in and see what the creator and the creation have in store for us now. Goodness. Let's see. Here we are. The uh Violo. Good morning. He almost tipped over the tray he was holding, but he caught himself. Oops. Close. <laughs> he set the tray down by my side. You know, it's been so long since we had to remember remember to feed a guest. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you remembered, buddy. I'm glad that we're remembering. <laughs> he clapped for himself and for Veer. <laughs> it's so easy to lose track of time. How do you feel today? Not too bad, I hope. Yesterday's news was distressing. What was that yesterday's news? Uh, well, we found out more about this boy. Um, and that the the monsters roaming around the castle were actually humans turned into this, I think, was what it was. And one of them was actually his dad. Because apparently his dad was not the best dad to him. I, I can't remember everything, oh my gosh. Um, I know that part, but a lot of stuff dropped in the last video. <laughs> understatement of the year for sure but I didn't know how to vocalize my internal strife understandable Viola leaned in to pat my cheek they won't get you here I promise he then began to move to sit up beside me I he straightened up and away from me oh oh dear I need to go my sunshine has called for me well, he was going to talk to us about something, but his, uh, sunshine. Enjoy your food. I watched him leave, noticing a few flowers that weren't there before. Oh, he brought us new flowers. They receded once he left, and I wondered if he'd been pulled away on purpose. I didn't really care. I needed some space for myself anyway. What? Is that like the end of the demo? Hang on. Endings. Is that the end of the demo? Did we mess up? Wait, no! 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 Oh, did I mess up somewhere? No. I know the demo isn't completed, but... Hmm. Okay, that must be... Like, when the game is completed, that it will pick up from there. Because it didn't say bad end. So, I think that is an ending that will be continued. <sighs> okay, so I guess we should try to find some bad ends now. And whenever the game is um, added on to, we can continue from there. Hang on, I'm going to double check and make sure the game <laughs> hasn't been, like, updated and I haven't noticed. Because, oh my gosh. What do you guys think? Wh what have you guys thought about our journey so far? I've really enjoyed it. This is such interesting group of characters. And I'm glad that we're learning more. All right, I do have the most recent version, so we're going to see if we can hunt down some bad endings then. All right. Okay, let's just... Actually, 
why don't I just pick up a, one of the saves here? My last name's La Berman. Okay. Do do do. Let's see. Preferences. Load. Yeah, this is way back at the beginning, right? Okay. Let's see. This was... Holy crap. Um, This has been a while ago. I need to give up. It was hopeless. <laughs> We're just gonna give up. I feel tears stinking in the corner of my eyes. So what if I got off this ship? So what if I managed to get to a safe location? No place was safe. I'd eventually put my trust in the wrong person again and be in another bad situation. My desire for connection was a pathetic sight. Even after being shot in the back multiple times. Even after being left to die on more than one occasion. I kept trusting people like a damn fool. There was no point. My body felt heavy and I lost the motivation to move. Everything was pointless. I didn't have time to react when the ship lurched. My poor balance set me rolling across the floor. Only instinct had me bracing my feet against the column to keep from rolling anymore. The sprain in my left ankle screeched at the impact, but I didn't have time to wonder if I'd broken it. Another lurch came from the other side of the ship. I flung my long wrist chains around the column and used them to hold on. Chaos reamed above me. This is way back at the very beginning. Uh, we were... <sighs> Okay, if I remember correctly, we were a mercenary, but we got betrayed by other mercenaries, or bounty hunters, or whatever. And so they were going to bring us in for a bounty. And that's why we're, like, tied up in the ship. And then it's getting way too close to the creator's island, and they actually come on board and take people for their experiments. Frantic streams and shouting echo down the stairs. Okay. Okay, so this is the normal. We covered this in part one, if you guys want to go check it out. Let me see. So skip. Oh, there's a boy! Okay, try to fight him off. Stay okay, we stayed quiet the original time. Um, Beg him to release me. There was no other choice. I didn't know how he passed me the first time, but if he was going to check each inch of the space, there was no way out. I wasn't sure how to get his attention, so the, I did the only thing I could think of. My knees ached when they hit the ground. I pressed my forehead against uh, his boot and prayed he wouldn't kick me out of reflex. Please don't hurt me. The words fell out of my mouth. I felt the attacker tense. What? His hand reached down and grabbed at me. He snagged my shoulder guard at first. Huh? His second hand grabbed at me, calloused fingers clawing around till they grabbed my chin. A person? A person! His attention wrapped around me like a vice. I recognized the mild trimber, tremble in the air as telekinesis. The feeling of dozens of invisible th tendrils catching onto my clothes and skin made me want to puke. You're a living person? You... He reached a hand that wasn't holding my face down to my throat, pressing two fingers against my pulse. You're alive! I just can't see you! Huh? My breath rolled over his thumb. Did you talk? I nodded my head. I can't find your mind. I can't hear you either. Despite that, his face broke into a vicious, gleeful grin. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, he is, like, blind. And I th he might be deaf as well, and he actually uses, um... Uh, I forgot, um... Some kind of power to be able to sense people around him. So, um, we're like... We don't have any of it? Any of... Oh my gosh. Go go watch go 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 watch the other videos to remember I forgot the terms. So uh we are essentially, you know, weird because we pretty much have none of that in our body, so we're pretty much invisible to him. So he finds that very interesting. 
But you're on your knees. Oh, are you part of the crew, begging like your pathetic little friends to survive? Oh, look, he's got a little tongue stuck out. <laughs> Cowards are the most disgusting thing. I shook my head. You're on your knees, so you have to be begging. The smile on his face took on a dangerous edge. I nodded and then shook my head. Then I felt like an idiot because that made no sense. Hmm? Uh, you're not part of the crew then, huh? I nodded. I see. Still a coward, but not scum. He let out a disappointed sigh all the same. Is it too much to ask that interesting people also have a bit of fight in them? It's so boring when subjects don't have a personality to keep me entertained. Dry, dry textbooks end up at the fireplace after all. He pouted, but that pout turned faded into a grin. I'm not supposed to do this, but you'll make for an interesting study. His hot hands dropped down and found my chains. It's been so long since we had a guest with such a unique value. You, you are what I've been waiting for. His pleased smile becomes more deranged. You have to come with me. His magic exploded in my mind. It overstimulated my senses until I cracked. I sank deep into the void, only the man's delighted whisper breaking through. We're going to have so much fun together. Okay. So, we still show, uh, he still decides to take us in this route. I think we greeted him last time. <laughs> I don't think he'll like us if we uh, yelled and dove away, but I'm seeing if we can get a bad ending. <laughs> I took advantage of him, pu pulling the daggers away to move. He looked ready to kill despite uh, my being taken captive. Was he in disagreement with the other one? I let out a panic yell and flung myself in the op opposite direction of him. My feet caught on the chain between the manacles and my ankles. It sent me sprawling to the ground with a stunned moan. <laughs> the things I put up with. <laughs> he's so done with us. <laughs> he just met us and he's so done. I said not to scream. <sighs> the freak growled while rounding the bed. Don't call him a freak. His steps were quicker now. With inhuman speed, his foot slammed down onto my head, pinning me cheek down to the ground. I struggled, but his foot didn't budge a single inch. Annoying. How vexing. He brings in a mindless buffoon of all things, saying that it's valuable. The pressure on my head increased to a painful degree. I see no value here. Even if you're a little freak of nature, we can learn plenty from your corpse. B better that than dealing with the headache you are bound to cause me. Before he could crack my skull like an egg, the door opened. I watched the ship's attacker enter and tilt his head. My sunshine, no! He pouted and hurried over, hugging, t tugging the taller man off me. Despite being able to pin me down, the tall man stepped away with only a light touch. <sighs> he huffed about it, though. A host should not assault his guests randomly. At least have a purpose for the violence, my sunshine. I do have a purpose. I don't want to be his host. <laughs> none of our guests have ever had... Oh, none of our guests have ever had long-term lodging in our home. The dungeons are part of their, our castle, t Oh, this is attacker. The dungeons are part of our castle, too. My love. But they're different. That is a workspace. These floors are meant for us. The smaller man sighed and clasped his hands together. Oh. I know, my I sunshine. know. If you know, then move him. I can't. The quality of the dungeons could degrade our guests before experimentation. Not to mention, not to mention his, 
Time in the dungeon leads to short life shelf life on Harvest Parts 2. I told you why our guest is important. You know we can't risk that. The taller man crossed his arms and pouted. My sunshine. Wait, my sunshine. No, you will not break me with a sweet voice. <laughs> I think you will. The smaller man sighed and turned to look in my direction. It took him a bit of time to find me. When he did, he pulled me up and pushed me back onto the bed. We will discuss this more later, my sunshine. Hmm. The tall man sneered down at me. You're awake, which is good. Any problems with your vision? Odd spots? Shorter range? No, but it's hard, hard to tell for sure in a dim room. Oh, right. My sunshine can see in the dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can see in the dark. And you're blind. I didn't know he could see in the dark. See, I, this is why we try to go different routes. You learn more. He laughed and waved a hand in front of his face. I haven't needed the light in a long time. We have to make sure to brighten the place up. Must we? I'd rather our guest not break his neck walking around, so yes, Viv. Viv let out a disgruntled, a disgusted grunt. No issues with your hearing, it seems. No. I hear fine. I'm surprised you can hear me. Was I interesting because he wasn't I interesting because he couldn't hear me? I can't hear you. I can hear the air elements I've attached to you repeating what you've said to me. My eyes flickered around me out of habit. My chains prevented me from opening my third eye meant, meant the gesture was meaningless. Wee! <laughs> I love it when they zoom in like that. It's so cute. Okay, we have seen this before. Okay. We've seen this part before. Whee! I forced myself to be productive. Drew in a nervous breath. Let's see. Okay, we have seen these parts before. Alright! What's this? I. Oh, yeah! He was seeing if we would fight with him. Look at him! I gripped the sword and. Okay. I think we resolved to do our best last time. Okay, let's just let it clatter to the floor. I'm thinking it'll what? actually kill us. <laughs> Look how mad he is. He noticed the motion and scowled. That is not what I asked you to do. I'm not going to fight you. Something had to be off about this. Sure, he overtook the ship, but I was willing to bet it had more to do with magic than combat prowess. Oh, we are so wrong. He is a very good fighter. I refused to risk injury and upsetting Vivir. Injuring him and accepting Vivir, who looked far more capable of crushing my skull. Violo tilted his head. <clears throat> you don't have a choice. Pick it up. Fury garbled his words. Anger changed his stance from calm elegance to bristling tension. No. Whoa, God. Hello. <laughs> Violo moved with unexpected speed. One moment he's a few feet away from me, the next he was in my face. His blades were gone, and he swung an open palm at my face. It collided with enough force that I felt something in my face crack a bit. The blow almost sent me to the ground. He grabbed me by the collar and picked me up like I weighed nothing. Before I could react, my sl my sp Fine slammed into one of the bookshelves. Books clattered down around me. The impact hurt like hell. 
I looked down at one of the open ones and realized it had a touch sight paper in it. No wonder the damn things were so heavy. The long sword from before landed close enough to my face that a thin slice of red cut across my cheek. Oh, we making it, mate. <laughs> Biello stood in front of me, smile tight. You will take that sword, and you will fight me. You have to prove yourself. No, I don't. I've already proven myself to everyone who matters. I regret this. Biolo was in my face again, leaning over me with his face twisted in rage. You have not proven it to me! To my surprise, the dagger in his hand slammed into my gut. He twisted the blade and dragged it up, sawing through my insides with ease. Oh, dang. I blacked out, expecting to die. I woke up on the floor in a pool of my own blood with the sword resting beside me. Fiolo stood a few place paces away, blades in hand, waiting. Pick it up. I forced myself to my hands and knees. No. He clicked his tongue. Very well. There are far more boring ways to test your endurance. He punctuated that sentence by kicking me so hard my skull cracked. Holy crap. Oh, hello. <laughs> over and over he would overwhelm me with his speed and terrifying presence. I thought he'd finish the job, but I'd wake up again, sore. The last time his foot rested on my chest, pressing down pressing down his toe on my ribs one by one. He pressed until I cracked with sickening noises. Okay, so he's cracked our skull, stabbed us, and now he's like breaking our ribs. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't even scream anymore. Fantastic. Well, you can take a beating. He spoke dispassionately. That doesn't mean much to me. It's not impressive. I'm a little annoyed for my little Rose. She thinks so highly of you. Who? I expected at least some competence and forethought. I suppose it'd be easy for you to trick mortals. Should I punish you for tricking one of my Roses? Who? Who? He rested his foot on my chest and thought about it. Maybe I should. I'll have to think about it. He stepped off me, and I felt the overwhelming presence of his power pour into me again. He re reconnected my ribs to one another. Bones and organs were the hardest to mend, yet he'd done it so many times. Get out. I have what I need. He paused mid-turn away from me. I watched his eyes rotate upwards. He cocked his head back and forth a few times like a confused dog. What? Now? He's probably starving, though. Yolo looked in my direction. I have worked him over a little bit. Mm-hmm. He nodded. Very well. His attention focused back on me again. My sunshine has sent for you. Oh, we're gonna have tea with him again. Okay, time to disappoint him. <laughs> I tensed. Join him in the garden. He's promised to provide food for you. It's not poisoned, I promise. He doesn't hate you that much yet. The attempt at being comforting made me even more nervous. Where is the garden? I don't know, actually. I have no idea where anything is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see, skip. Whee! There are important notes to catalog about you. <laughs> okay, we are. Okay. Okay, what was this? Alright, he's starting to ask us questions now. I think if we aim to be impressive, he liked it. Let's refuse to answer. Let's make him mad. I don't see the point in answering pointless questions. <sighs> pointless. 
pointless and unoriginal. Then again, I doubt something artificial could match human newness. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Favira's shoulders tightened. I braced myself for another beatdown, but his eyes only narrowed. <laughs> then his face broke into a slight smirk. Personal attacks are an obvious sign of ineptitude when it comes to conversation. Can you not manage a less rash reply? I see no reason to coddle my captor. <laughs> uh, but I never, but I never to coddle me. What? But I never to coddle me. But I, okay, maybe he said, but I never said to coddle me. I do not want a yes man. I need any signs of intelligence in that tiny brain of yours. Surprising. Then again, I shouldn't be surprised. His casual, knowing sigh made me feel defensive. What is that supposed to mean? It means that my expectations were already low. Disappointing. While As expected. While you might be the infamous Sparrow, Fael, now your history as a peasant is well document documented. You are born without class and raised without manners. Given your percentage, it's parentage, it's unavoidable. The bastard continued to stare at me like I was a bug pinned to a board. Don't you dare bring my parents into this. <laughs> How can I not when their failings are so obvious? <laughs> He's like, oh, you want to play this game? We can play this game. They did everything they could for me. Yet, it wasn't enough. Their child has become a mannerless brute without the capacity for intelligent conversation. They're probably rolling in their graves, poor things. I slam my pa palms down on the table. My parents would be proud of me. Really? He raised a pitying eyebrow. You are so hated by your own allies that the story of people betraying you are famous. Stabbed in the back, literally and figuratively. Didn't you spend some time in an exot prison after ending up as a scapegoat? And then there's the fact that you turned down stable and calm work, saying you preferred the wrist. The criticisms made my blood boil. Man, they actually know a lot about us. <laughs> Then again, since you're not the most intelligent, intelligent creature, I can see why people would only use you for your brawn. So again, I ask, what is there for your parents to be proud of? It's a genuine question. Something in me snapped. Some part of my brain screamed that my behavior was irrational. The experience experienced professional in me noted my mood was deteriorating faster than normal. The son of a bitch probably had some kind of hex on me, but I didn't care. At least I was born. You're an abomination before the gods and an imperfect one at that. I sat back in my chair and threw my hands out in his direction. Look at you. Who would ever call you human? You want me, you want me to throw in big words to sound smart? I can. You're nothing more than a half-baked attempt at, at creating something new, and I'm surprised that you weren't destroyed. Holy crap. Violo is really gonna murder us for talking to his sunshine like this. After all, that's what happens to the most, flaw most flawed first attempts. I might be mo nothing more than a grimy mercenary, but at least I can say that I'm a true person. I paused my rant to glare at him. <laughs> Apparently he don't care. <laughs> he was grinning. What did you say? The voice carried on the wind despite Viola not being here. Wait. <laughs> oh, Viola's not even in the area. And he's like, what did you say? <laughs> Yes, yes. He's like, you talking trash about my sunshine? I am going to fillet you alive. <laughs> the voice carried on the wind despite Violo not being here. Now you want to die. <laughs> I hope you guys 
friends heard that, it was like, now you want to die. Yes, we do. <laughs> I watched as the shadowy arm slid out from under the table and lunged for me. Icy cold claws dug into my neck. A violo-shaped shadow figure oozed out from under the table to loom over me. Bavir sat back and watched the show, eyes glinting with delight. How dare you speak ill of my sunshine? The grip on my throat tightened. I tried to grab at the figure, but without magic I was unable to grab onto it. My fingers passed through it like it was air. Black spots began to form in my vision. Watch your tongue, ingrate. I don't need, need you to have it. The threat was low and pressed right against my ear. Get out of my sunshine's garden before I come down there and gut you like a fish. The shadow burst into black ooze that splattered all over me. Favir chuckled darkly before taking a sip of tea. <laughs> Favir's enjoying this. He's like, yeah, 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 you know, bring on the, bring it on. I want to see, I want to see my honey get uh, pissed and kill you. <laughs> I bent over, coughing and rubbing my throat. You set me up. No, merely reminded you of something important. I stared at him, the question obvious on my face. No matter what you do or have. He leaned in close. I will always be more than important than his research. <laughs> yes, love to see it, love to see it. <laughs> he pulled away and waved a hand. Now get out. Viola will kill you if he finds you here now. I don't want blood on my new white dahlias. Shoo. I stumbled into a standing position and left the courtyard center. It was difficult to navigate out of the garden without a guide, but I managed. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't mess with his sunshine. His sunshine is the most important thing in his life. You don't mess with his sunshine. Okay, we've seen this before. I regret this. Oh, back, back, back. This is new. I think this is new. <laughs> okay, back up. Sleeping remained difficult. The stagnant air in the castle tasted bitter. Doors would slam behind me. Sometimes they'd refuse to open at all. Carpets would curl under my feet, and tables went out of their way to get in my path. A few paintings even threw themselves at me. <laughs> the entire castle is pissed at us. They're like, how dare you talk to Favir that way? Because Favir is actually the caretaker of the castle. He takes care of everything in the castle. The plants, the creatures, everything. He takes care of them. So, of course the castle is going to be like, screw you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we were mean to their caretaker. I could even I could even try to find sanctuary by a wall or near the floor because I couldn't okay, I couldn't even try to find sanctuary by a wall or near the floor because a stone would shove at me. Luckily these bouts of aggression tend to be brief. It reminded me of a toddler, kicking and screaming until they tire themselves out. The behavior spelled an ill, Ill future for me, though. Viola and Vivir's distaste spread through the castle like wildfire. This is not good. No! I navigated the hallways, trying to remember important paths. The sound of voices had me hiding behind a pillar. It was a bad decision. I regret this. I know. I thought there would be... Isn't. We should. As I grew closer, their voices grew more distinct. I can't. I heard him let out a frustrated sigh. Why not? 
you know as well as I do why, Vivir? My love. I heard Vivir taking a shocked short breath. Oh. My Wait. Sunshine. <laughs> my sunshine. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have taken that tone with you. You shouldn't have. I forgive you, though. I can understand why it happened. The current results don't look good. I've also got those stiffs breathing down my neck. Little Hay had the audacity to imply he should take over my research. <sighs> Disgusting arrogance as always. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for all the chaos, my sunshine. I'll speed things up to get the results we need. After that, we can get rid of Fail once and for all. Turning him to a, fer a fertilizer might finally yield some use out of him. <laughs> I doubt it. He would find a way to mess up being plant food. <laughs> True. Enough of talking about Fael. Speech practice is meant to be fun. Did you see one of our little Rose's latest pieces? Their voices began to break up too much for me to continue listening to them. Once the sound had faded, I stepped out of my hiding place, heart hammering in my chest. Get rid of me. I gotten into trouble this time. Desperation acted as a wonderful energizer. The castle had many areas to explore, and I needed a pass out. My exploration remained slow and cautious. <laughs> They're, yeah, they're, they're not going to let you get out. Okay, we've seen all this part. <gasps> okay, we've seen this. This is him talking to somebody. Okay, we've seen this. <laughs> They're so mad to see us. <laughs> the presence of two cranky living gods didn't help. The pair returned to work. I snuck back to the study. Okay, and this is where uh, we learn that we can talk through the book, the um, mirror. Okay. Back. I felt frustrated, scared, understanding. Let's put frustrated. Three living gods can't get one mortal away from two. The bitterness seeped in my uh, seeped in despite my efforts to hold it back. What's your tone, mortal? We're already extending quite the aid despite the wrist. Be calm, Nikar. Mortals cannot comprehend the backlashes of gods fighting. Their, the eyes leveled on me grew more tense. We are sympathetic to your plight, and we are sorry we cannot whisk you away. Pario is the seat of Viel and Vivir's power. That alone makes them our equals if we try to fight them. The catastrophe catastrophes that would follow such an altercation would kill thousands. One mortal is not worth such a high price. Even if I'm weird? <laughs> weird. A void or something. It's the thing that about me Viola wants to study. Doesn't that make me important? What does that have to do with anything? I see. Yes, you are very important. Which is why we cannot risk you getting killed in the fight. But I can get killed in the meantime? Viola and Vivir are, are mercurial beasts. They're also creatures of habit. Don't be directly disobedient and you'll survive. Okay, be directly disobedient. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get them to kill me. I want a bad hit. Do, 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 do. 
Okay, so we're being led along. Okay, we're back in here. Back up. This is new. Okay, he used um playing with a body here. Hello. His face his smile turns into pure annoyance when he sees us. Huh. You're awake. Time to get to work. I shivered at the cold tone. I was making such nice progress. <sighs> he ran a hand across the, his the gory body with a sigh. In fact, maybe I should have done this with you from the start. The dark mutter had me tensing up. Corpse can't argue. Hmm. He tapped a finger against his chin. No, live samples are better. He turned to me, forcing a big smile on his face. Live is better. For now. Anyways, you got me distracted. Work is never done. I called you here for the next step of the experiment. <laughs> I love these little differences where he really is mad <laughs> to see us. Okay, and this is where he wants like organ samples and skin and everything. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna say I refuse this time. <laughs> Violo froze. What? Pardon? I refuse. I won't let you take samples from me. Violo laughed. The sound had me backing up a few paces. Aww. Oh, that's adorable. You're acting like you have a choice in the matter. He gave me a sick smile. I didn't bring you here to ask you for samples, silly little thing. I called you here to take them. In a heartbeat, he was in front of me. His hand closed over my mouth, cutting off any sound I would have made. The weight of something pressing into my skull hit like a charging bull. Phantom sensations overwhelmed me until my mind broke under the simulation. My world went black. The first thing I noticed when I came back was the pain. My jaw throbbed in time with my heartbeat. Parts of my body ached and I reached down only to feel blood. I forced myself into a sitting position on the ground. The sample removal areas had been barely patched up. <laughs> oh, yeah, we made him mad and he's like, I am just doing the bare minimum. Because before he made sure everything was healed up and, you know, we didn't feel any pain. He was being careful with us because we were being... A good boy and now he's like well you gotta feel this and suffer <laughs> some are still bleeding <sighs> don't be a wuss Viello sing oh don't be a wuss Viello sing song voice had me tense up he stood a few feet away working on one of the tables I watched as he began to preserve the samples he took from me you sick son of a bitch this didn't have to be this way. I had every intention of playing nice. His eyes cut over to me, cold, mocking and cold. You just had to be defiant. This is the second time you've been defiant for no reason. Do you have a death wish? Yes, we do. <laughs> he walked over to crouch down in front of me. Are you hoping to avoid some suffering by having me kill you? You'll be happy to hear you're getting there. He wore a smile on his face, but his eyes were flat with malice. I won't play your games. He leaned forward, voice dropping to a menacing growl. This is not a game. The plants in the room flare to life, the dim lights winking out of existence. Only his haunting eyes were clear in the dark. This has never once been a game to me. You are the one arbitrary assign assigning a intention to my actions. 
If you keep getting in the way of my results, you will pay for it. More is at stake than one annoying human. He crawled forward, resting a hand on my knee to loom over me. While I can appreciate some spunk, things that get in the way of my research will not be tolerated. His grip on my knee tightened until I heard something begin to crack. Pain lanced up my leg. Remember that. He clenched his fist and I let out a pained scream. Weak. So he pretty much just shattered our kneecap. He stood up, the light fading back in. He paced a bit, nervously scratching at his chest. Am I wasting my time here? No. No, I was trusted with this. Damn it. He kicked out at the air. One of the tables moved to let him hit it. Aww. What? Oh no, bad table. His voice softened and he moved to pat the furniture. <laughs> he likes his furniture now. His furniture is good boys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Out of the way when I'm kicking. Did I hurt you? It felt like he completely forgot I existed. He's like, no, baby, no, don't move over here. I didn't want to kick you. <laughs> I have things to do. Hmm. You're going to get blood all over my sunshine's hallway. I can't have him slipping in it. He turned towards me and reached out to grab the top of my head. The energy he poured into me felt like a raging river dumping into a small cup. I screamed and tried to pull away or shove him off. It was futile. He didn't budge an inch. He released me right as my body began to feel like it was going to pop. There we go. No more blood. Wheezy, haul them, haul them out. The door opened to the, the study and the large creature ambled in, grabbing me with his hands. Violo turned away from me completely. The aberration dragged my barely conscious body back to my room. <laughs> we getting the tar beat out of us. I blacked out halfway there. Recovering from the experiment took longer than I expected. I'd gone in before sunrise, but it was well past midday before I felt confident enough to walk. My jaw ached. It's nothing to write home, though. Uh. Okay, we have seen this. Okay, let's see. Oh, he brought us back to the garden, even though we weren't supposed to be here. Okay. I decided to fail on purpose. <laughs> I had no desire to play some kind of game with him. There's no telling what he used this baseline for, and I couldn't be sure he didn't have something up his sleeve. <laughs> We're just gonna fail everything on purpose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the heck? What are the four standard classifications of non-godly entities? Just humans. His brow twitched. There are four classifications. I only know humans. <laughs> I shrugged. Your tendency to examine your environment indicates otherwise. I met his glare with a fat, flat look. He moved on. What are the five standard classifications for nature spirits? There aren't any. <laughs> Who was the first person to tame fire? The god of blacksmiths, probably. <laughs> the god of blacksmiths. <coughs> I could hear him grinding his teeth. What forms can de devils not take? They can take all forms. Favir took a long breath. Do you have a fetish for being punished? Huh? I raised a brow.
My smugglers faded when the back of his hand hit me so hard my ears rang. In what language are runes written? I rubbed at my jaw, trying not to shake off the surprise. Trying to shake off the surprise. Whatever language a spellcaster speaks. <laughs> the plants nearby surged forward and wrapped around me, crushing me into the chair. Strong vines pinned my arms and legs down. A thorny one then wrapped around my throat. It didn't tighten. Perhaps you need some motivation to stop playing immature games. He leaned forward. What is the definition of a core? I don't know. <laughs> the thorns bit into my throat. Disappointing. I should, I should take your head off right now. His voice rumbled, low and menacing. I told you not to play games, and what do you do? <sighs> he leans back with a sigh. Is this you trying to get yourself killed? Because you don't need to work any harder, I assure you. Viola was losing his interest in you. Navir paused and took a few breaths. <laughs> He coughed a few times before scowling down at his hand. I watched in mild terror as black blood slid down his palm. He licked the blood off his teeth. Oh, is he sick? <sighs> now look at what you've done. He snarled at me. Get out. He gestured idly with his hands. The plants holding me hauled me off the chair and dragged me out of the garden thrashing it each inch of the way. Once I was out of his sanctuary, the plants threw me into a column so hard I worried I broke a bone. It knocked the wind out of me, too. I tried to take time to roll over and catch my breath before standing. Thorny vines bristled and lashed out at me. Crawling away from the hostile plants was my only choice. <laughs> Inside the dark hallway, I could sprawl out and catch my breath. Th that had been a bad idea. Nothing in me had broken, but I did have a slight limp for my journey back to the room. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, we are getting so beat up, but they haven't killed us yet. I am surprised. Okay, we're sneaking around the castle again. Oh, look, it's throwing a <laughs> it's throwing a fit on us again. My chained legs became a constant obstacle. On more than one occasion, they snag on something. I barely avoid cracking my face open. I huffed at the situation. The castle throwing a fit at me didn't help. The damn thing acted like it wanted to put me in a coffin. It even tried to drop a massive slab of stone onto me. I dodged it, but the attempt left me more than a little rattled. The chain on my legs felt shorter, too. I swore I had more length to work with in the beginning. Now I had to walk in half or quarter steps to avoid tripping. I made it to the odd staircase in record time. Like I observed in the past, the flesh on the... <laughs> oh yeah, the castle's trying to kill us. They're like, oh my god. The rest of the castle had been somewhat lit up for me, but the staircase was pitch black. I walked for an eternity. The spinning staircase had to go at least a mile underground. There wasn't a single floor added to the staircase either. It was a straight shot from top to bottom. Oh, we're going back to the dungeon. Alright. Okay, let's make the stupid decision. Okay. Uh, we left him to rot last time. We're going to release him this time. 
Even if they didn't, I couldn't live with the guilt of doing nothing. I wasn't a god, nor a judge, or a jury. Their fate wasn't mine to control. The keys felt heavy in my hands. My own principles warred louder and louder with each click of a lock opening. The bastards were so out of it they hadn't even noticed the doors opening yet. I let the keys drop to the floor and walked away. The mercy of letting them die quickly was all I could spare them. Also, they didn't even bother leaving. Because all of them have been exper experimented on and they're kind of not there anymore. Not all there anymore. But they didn't even bother trying to leave. The first sign something was off when I woke up was the smell. The overwhelming scent of earth and flowers stood out in the room. Thus, I didn't even need to see him to know he was there. I sat up, rubbing my eyes. Vivir loomed over me, staring at me. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Is it, though? He tilted his head. What? Violo's creations were in quite the tizzy this morning. They're creatures of habit that follow strict routine. Oh, this is just them smelling that we were down there. It was quite the headache to wrangle them all, not to mention the fact that some of them managed to get out of their cages. While wrangling a gaggle of humans is far from difficult, it is tedious. My morning has been very, very tedious. Catching experiences, experiments, recovering their corpse. Viola is going to be furious. He has so many plans. Vivir sighed. Then a vicious smile crawled into his face. Of course, I won't complain about him hating you. Maybe he'll even get rid of you. It felt like he was staring into my soul. That would be so, so delightful. I was lucky the consequences weren't more dire. All the same, curiosity burned in me. These are Violo's creations. Why was Vivere running after them? He didn't help with the research, so what was his role? Okay. Ooh. Okay, this is him telling us he, like, um, kind of takes care of the castle. Nope, don't skip. Don't skip. Stop. Back. Pathetic. I haven't been here long. You're right. I'm just going to say pathetic. Get him mad. My mumbling didn't go unnoticed. What? what was that? Pathetic. You're pathetic. He was. I doubted that Violo actually let him develop free, uh, free of influence. You think you have free will when he's made you into a puppet. The via remained silent. The only sound I could hear clearly was my heart beginning to beat faster. I'd expected a reaction. Any kind of reaction. I wondered if tension could kill. If it could, I'd be finding out. Vivir's face nearly crashed into my own. Oh. Unlike Violo, he didn't move without a pained wheeze. But he was just as fast. You. <laughs> you. The gold in his eyes glittered dangerously. <laughs> then he began to laugh. You're a spe special breed of stupid. This will not be forgotten, nor forgiven. He stepped back while fixing his hair. I will see you later. 
The door to my room opened for him. It slammed itself shut. Only once the small, strong smell of flowers faded was I able to drag in a ragged breath. Ragged breath. That glint, that menace. No matter, matter how much I rubbed my hands together, they failed to grow warmer. Food arrived shortly after Vivir left. I forced myself to eat to keep my energy high. I paced. I wanted to go out exploring again, but I already pushed my luck by wandering too far once. Okay, now he's thinking about the tunnels. Okay. <laughs> okay, and this is how he's talking about talking to his father. His face remained displeased while looking mm. upon me. What an unwelcome presence. He stabbed the dagger into the creature. It stayed upright despite the creature's quivering. Violo walked over and pulled me up by my chains. What are you do doing wandering about? I wasn't aware I had to stay in my room. You don't, but things like you don't do things without a reason. He tilted his head. Maps. Hmm. I tensed. Even if you mapped every inch of this castle, escape would be impossible. He tugged me closer, smile malicious. I can't have pests ru ruining my flowers, after all. The pitiful creature let out a crackling be bellow. Violo's gaze turned sharp and he whirled around. A bolt of lightning shot between him and the creature. It screeched as the lightning circulated through the metal instruments embedded in it. I am this close to ripping out your vocal cords, father, dear, dearest. <coughs> Fiolo growled. He approached the seizing figure to kick it in its side. Wasn't it your whole shtick to be a man, father? Stop being a little wuss. The sight actually shocked me. I deserved him to treat tables and books and forks and doors better than he treated this apparition. He turned back towards me. Apologies for the noise. Father Dearest has the tendency to beg whenever humans are around. Father? Yes, that the sack of shit that bred a bitch to have me. He rolled his eyes and kicked the creature again, suffering his eternal punishment for his crimes. His mind had fractured beyond repair at this point. Violo pouted and crouched near the creature. <sighs> Okay, we have seen this before. I think last time we s we said, are you alright? We're going to say you're a monster this time. I couldn't hide my revulsion. Mm -hmm. Oh? Violo's side eye uh, made me pause. Well, now. You can't drop a com comment like that and walk it back. Finish your thought. Even if he's your father, how could you... His si silence felt more choking than the usual display of over-emotional outrage. How could I turn? How could I turn him into this? An evil grin split across his face. With a smile on my face, and with a smile on my face and glee in my heart, monsters like him need uh, need for their outside to match their inside. They're scum. Below even the lowest point of pathetic humans, they deserve no better. You're lucky that your got good past deeds forced my code into play. He got dangerously close. I didn't dare breathe or take a step back. Only scum can become one of them. I can't punish the neutral soul. That would make me no better than them. He brushed a hand against my cheek, leaning in to whisper. But I don't need to keep you in a body to study the oddity of your soul. I should have moved you into a jar a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he moved back with a manic gig giggle. Your opinions are irrelevant. Right now, I need you not to wander the halls too much. The chains are you are on you are a bit broken, so you'll mess up my spell work. You're doing a ritual? He nodded. A complex one. 
I'll be cross if you ruin it, so off you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Have you seen this before? What? Okay. I stood up and reached to open it. It literally moved away from me. I tried again. The action repeated. The windows reacted in the same way, sliding out of my reach each time. Oh no. My nails bled and tore with all my struggling. As the sun began to set, I realized that I hadn't been sent food. This was it. I struggled until my voice was raw. My hands and feet were torn against the walls. In the end, I could only collapse into the bed with an exhausted sob. I sent prayers to whatever god would listen, hoping this was some kind of cruel prank. I heard no answer as I faded into unconsciousness. Burst of pain cut through the hazy glow that had awakened my mind. Sharp jolts of agony pulled me closer and closer to awareness. Something alien kept trying to pull me back to sleep. In the end, I latched onto the agony and followed it into reality. Part of the pain came from being bound with my li limbs forcibly splayed out. A tight metal, metal gag had silenced me. My abdomen felt like it was on fire. Oh, is he just tight? tied us down like dissecting us I opened my got eyes to a hazy view of the ceiling instinctively I tried to move my hands and feet all I got was a light finger twitch oh I know my camera there we go okay. uh so they finally or have we finally pushed them past the edge? Let's see what's that position. I think we finally pushed them past the edge, haven't we? I don't know how long my model was messed up, guys. I'm sorry. Huh. Our guest is waking up. Really? Damn, he is persistent. The an anomalous bloodline could be a tribute to it as well. True. What a pain. Can you check their eyes for me? Of course. Bavir's a pet apathetic gaze slid across my face. Obviously signs of impairment. If you pour a little bit into them, they should go back down. Hmm, I don't care. Bielo sneered down at me. That would take more time, and I've already wasted enough of that. Scream and cry and thrash all you want. It won't do anything. Well, I'll find it amusing. A serrated blade appears in Viola's hand, just at the edge of my pref periphery. <laughs> yeah, they finally had enough, and they're just like, you know, screw it. Let's just do what we gotta do. Is he gonna cut out our soul and put it in a jar like he threatened to do? I anticipate you'll last about 12 hours. But don't worry, I'll make each minute productive. I've got the journal ready. We need to work quickly. You have to cast the spells you've been building up soon. I know, I know. I'll be quick. The two looked down up upon me with merciless eyes. Violo disappointed, Pavir gleeful. You'll be useful somehow. I'll make it so. Dead end number one. Okay! Ha 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 ha! endings it doesn't say it's unlocked but we hit a dead end there's bad ends there's neutral ends a friend end, and romantic end 
We hit a dead end, but at least we hit something. We die. I take it we died. <laughs> uh, okay, um, I think I'm going to leave this series here until there's an update. Uh, so that we can get farther along in the story. But it was nice to see, like, their, their mad side. They were just like, oh, man. <laughs> They're ready to, like, destroy us. <laughs> and I don't blame them. But okay, thank you for joining me, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.